Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about the new Urban Decay palette, Alice Through the Looking Glass. This palette is available for $60 on the Urban Decay website. I will link that down below in the description box. And as it becomes available at other retailers, I will add those links as well. And I'm really excited that I was able to get my hands on this to share with you guys. I'm gonna swatch all of the eyeshadows today, show you how I got this look, and give you my first impressions. So if you're curious about this palette like I was, just keep watching. The first thing we obviously have to talk about is the packaging. The packaging is cardboard, but it is a really, really heavy, so I will just say off the bat that this is not your travel friendly palette. This is for someone who loves Alice in Wonderland, Urban Decay, beautiful packaging, and really wants the experience of this palette. It's got beautiful roses and flowers and butterflies on the front and on the back. It has that kind of holographic look like you're looking at it through a looking glass. What do you know? When the top opens, you have a really nice mirror here, and I like that it will stand open on its own, which does make it nice for using the mirror. The mirror says, we're all mad here, and then these doors on the inside say, I'm not strange, weird, off, more crazy, my reality is just different from yours. And then when you open these, you see a nice decorative butterfly that kind of pops out. So again, this is just purely for decoration, for enjoyment. Now, for people who want this kind of beautiful looking packaging, you're really gonna like it. For me, I would much rather open this and have the eyeshadows. You know, so you could have this open up, you'd have your eyeshadows here, easy. It wouldn't have to be so thick. It wouldn't have to be so incredibly heavy, but it is beautiful. So you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it just depending on what you're looking for. And then there's a drawer here that has the eyeshadows in it. This says, I know who I was when I got up this morning, but I must have changed several times since then. Of course, these are all quotations from Alice in Wonderland. And it pulls out to show you all of the shadows and a brush. I really like the kind of tile effect that is decorating these. Again, it's all cardboard, and I also like that you can completely pull it out. So you don't have to just hold on to this bulky packaging. You can just use this while you're actually trying to use the eyeshadows. When you pull out the eyeshadows, the back is very similar to the outer packaging, but it is in black and white, which matches these black and white tiles on the front and really allows the colors of the eyeshadows to shine because this is a very colorful, vibrant eyeshadow palette. Like a lot of Urban Decay palettes, you get a double-ended brush, and I've used this brush a little bit. I don't have a lot of opinions on it yet, but I do like that they added the design of the packaging on the brush. I think that's a nice touch. When you take your palette out of the outer packaging box that it comes in, you're gonna see on the back that the eyeshadows are organized in columns, which represent different characters. So this first column here is for Alice. My favorite in here is this matte peachy shade called Reflection. I think this is a beautiful crease shade that I used in my crease today. I also like the top shade looking glass as just a brightening all over the lid kind of satin finish shade. The second column is Mad Hatter and I think this is a really fun column. I love that you get some really bold colors here. The top three shades are a little bit shimmery and cake, the pink shade, has some definite glitter in it. The third column, Marana, is a really beautiful kind of neutral look. I like that it has one of the only truly matte shades in here, Chess Ford. This is a really nice brown to put in the crease to kind of blend things out with. And this top shade, Lily, I am obsessed with this eyeshadow. It is one of my favorites in the whole palette because at first it looks like it's going to be just a boring beige eyeshadow, but it has this really nice lavender shift to it, which I think is amazing and really, really cool. This is definitely one of my favorite shades so far in the whole palette. The fourth column is Erasabeth, Erisbeth. I don't know, that one, I think it was like the evil queen, but I don't remember how to say that. And this one is another beautiful column. I really like the way that these columns were designed. You have a matte blue in here, which I did use today. And like most matte shades, this color, you gotta build it, you gotta work with it, but it is beautiful. 
The burgundy shade is totally wearable. And you've got kind of your classic highlight all over the lid shade there at the bottom, as well as this turquoisey shimmery shade, which I was surprised doesn't look super shimmery on the lid. You're gonna see I'm wearing that shade as well today. And then the final column is for time. And this is a really smoky, purpley, taupey column. One of the shimmeriest colors in this palette is called Dream On, and it looks like an absolutely gorgeous shade in the pan, and it swatches kind of like crap. So that's a little bit disappointing. You really only get the glitter off it. You really don't get that purple taupe color, but you do have a black and a gray and a nice kind of bronzy taupe. So this is a usable column as well. Now, of course, 90% of the time that you're gonna use this palette, you're probably gonna be mixing the different looks, but I do like that this is kind of a guide and a starting point, especially because there are so many bright colors. It can kind of give you some ideas if you have no idea where to start. Overall, I'm impressed so far with the quality of these shadows. I think the shimmers are beautiful. They're that classic Urban Decay formula. I wish that there were more mattes in this palette, like a lot of Urban Decay palettes, but if you have a Naked Basics palette or other mattes in your collection that you can pull along with this, you're gonna be just fine. The two really usable matte colors for the crease and for the transition are Reflection and Chessboard, and I used both of those in my crease Today, I put that down first, and then I went in in the crease and the outer corner with Vandersnatch, which is that other matte color, that dark blue. And so that is kind of the outer part of my eye look today. On the center of the lid, I went in with Heads Will Roll, which, like I said in the swatches, is not coming off as sparkly as I thought it would, and I kind of like that. And then on the center of the lid, I went in with Metamorphosis, which is more of a more of a deeper periwinkle blue. Again, it has some shimmer, but the look isn't coming off as overly shimmery on my eyes, and I'm happy about that. For the lower lash line, I wanted to add another pop of color, so I went with Cape, which is kind of the brightest magenta color in this palette. And then for the inner corner, I used that beautiful shade, my favorite shade of the palette so far, which is Lily, that has that really nice lavender pinky shift to it. I'm happy with how this look turned out. I'm excited to do more looks. I think Alice and Marana are the two most wearable kind of everyday columns that you can pair together to get some white colors, to get some crease colors, and I love the pops of color as well. So I'm really excited to play with this more. I do have one lipstick from this collection as well that I'm wearing today. This is the lipstick in Alice. And when I opened this lipstick, I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified. It looks like the most concealery, death-looking lipstick I probably own. However, it is a sheer, shimmery lipstick, and I think it's beautiful. It has that same kind of lavender shift to it that the Lily eyeshadow does, and it just gives the nicest sheen. I have this all over my lips today, but I also think it would be a beautiful lipstick topper, maybe just right in the center of the lips to add that plumpness. Packaging matches the packaging from the palette, which is of course a nice touch, and it has no smell, which is a big win for me. So let me know what you think about this palette. Is it one that you're gonna pick up? I usually don't get palettes like this, but I'm really excited about this one and I can't wait to use it more. Let me know if you wanna see a more in-depth review on certain things about this palette once I've tried it. Do you wanna see more looks? One thing I was thinking about doing is a video where I did one look from each column. Let me know if you'd wanna see that or anything else. Thanks for stopping by today. Remember to hop on over to Instagram and Twitter and follow me at Robin's Cup and hit that subscribe button so I can see you guys here next time. Bye. If you're wondering why my highlight looks a little strange, hopefully it's not too crazy, but I put on two different highlighters today because I have two different favorites to show you and I wanted to be able to show you both of them.